to just bump her over a tiny bit. You're trying to teach her that she can go sideways without going forward. Is it wet? Yeah. It has been okay. all the other days too. Well, there's actually puddles in the grass. Oh. Okay, we won't. We'll just go on the roads. So this is my dream pony. When I was a kid, this is the pony I would have dreamed about because I wanted something that I could just go jump on and ride around and be safe and handle all the tack myself. The hardest thing about being a kid who loves horses is that you need adult help <laughs> if you don't have a really special kind of horse. Um, this is a really special kind of horse. She was much more expensive than Gunner. Um, and the reason is, is that they took the time to make sure that she was really safe, really sound-minded. Not one that was going to be, if, it, if she gets startled, it thinks she doesn't bolt. She just stops and stares at it. Um, <laughs> and I'm having a lot of fun because this is so comfortable. Yes. So the other thing is, is with things like ponies or kids' horses, is they can get really sour and nasty about being ridden because if you've got a little kid who has young hands and is bouncy and giggly and everything like that, if you put a bit in their mouth, then they're jerking on the pony's mouth. And um, if they can't sit well, if, they're, if, they, if they can't keep their seat, then every time they bounce, they're jerking on that pony's mouth. They really don't know what they're doing. So I love this pony because we can have her in a halter and her tack is just a bareback paddle, a paddle, a bareback pad. She can put it on herself and um, she can tighten it herself and there's no stirrups. So she can't, if she loses her balance, who cares? She just falls off and she yeah, has fun. fallen off once. And well, actually um, about three times. when she fell off, it didn't hurt the pony because, well, she didn't have a bit in her mouth. So nothing got jerked on. And um, when I was a kid, I did have a horse. I got my first horse when I was 10 and she was a green little Arabian filly and she was a good horse but she was a horse who I definitely had to have my parents there with me for her to be safe and it made it made it so I could go out and I could brush her and I could take care of her and I could bond with her but I couldn't ride her and it was really sad for me um, and so if you're gonna do horses either be super super involved with your kids and be there we come out every day and or get something that is so trustworthy that they can be in a halter so the kids aren't destroying them. Otherwise, I have to get on that pony and I have to tune her back up. Hey, look at my legs. Yep, you are a crazy girl. But we're going to do the same thing with him that we did with her in that we're not going to put a bit in his mouth and we're not going to put a saddle on him. We want him to um, be solid enough that we can ride him the same way that we ride her because I'm not willing to have my kids on a horse that needs something um, that totally restrains him in order for him to be level-headed. So that's my that's my tip. If you're going to do horses, get something and spend a little more money. You don't have to spend a ton of money. I'm not saying to spend like $3,000 on a horse. I'm saying um, it's going to cost more to have a really good horse that you feel safe with. And if it needs to be a horse that needs a severe bit, and adults around all the time in order for them to be safe, I would say pass. We have Gunner right now because we thought that's what he was, and he wasn't. He, he has a good personality, but he's not ready for the kids to just jump on him. He, he needs a little bit more work, and he's an partially, he's three quarters Arabian, so sometimes they can be a little hotter too. But and at least from what I've noticed, what I've seen, time, is what really matters in getting a horse to be trustworthy and experience and that's why we do a lot of walking up and down the roads we walk up to the dogs we let them be barked out by the dogs we walk by the tractor we walk by the traffic and um, we open and shut gates and pretty much we do everything we can to let them see that when they're with us they're safe okay, but nothing more than walking because it will slip and we're just trying to get him used to it So that's going to be way too long for you, kiddo, if you're already reaching really hard on her. Yes. Yeah, you got to shorten it up quite a bit. Yes. Hmm? Yeah, about there. Like, yeah, about there is good.
Okay, I don't want him lunging. I don't want him trotting because it will slide right off of him. We're just letting him practice with it, okay? Yeah. Don't let him, honey, don't, honey, don't let him step on the rope. Okay? He's getting better at crossing those hind feet. Okay, so what do we do when we first get on? Do we try and stop her? Do we try and turn her? We do what? For how long? 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Because it's okay just to sit and be calm when we first get on, huh? Yep, that looks good. Would you give me my boost? Yep. And sit. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Just calm. Just you sit calm. Honey, why are you turning her? Just calm. 10 seconds. Count to 10. He's bending really easily. Is he bending really good? Yeah. Well, he has no problem bending. It's moving forward that he doesn't like. Okay, gentle. You shouldn't have to push. Okay. Remember, it's more on his, on his halter than on his chest. I'm not even having to pull on his halter. Okay, but... You need to to give him that cue to go back, okay? He says, well, you're not stepping in it. How do I know it's not acid? <laughs> I can't step in it because I'm it. Okay, longer rope. And keep him away from the electric. It will shock him. Okay, what, it, what have I told you about the fences? Don't go up to the fences. They are electric and he will spook and he won't trust you. And Paige has watched me enough times to know that when he is distracted, we take him in a circle and remind him to keep an eye on us. She really likes the challenge. She wants to be the grown-up kid with the grown-up project. Okay, well, there's the camera right there. I gotta go pee. <laughs> we don't have a bathroom out here. I really gotta go pee. I I have to find somewhere.
Okay, he needs to stop. He needs to move his butt. Move over, boy. Hey, stop. Move over. I don't think he can reach it, honey. So the girls, let's see if I can show you the ponies. So the girls get frustrated with me when I don't let them canter and do all sorts of tricks and I make them work on basics like turning and stopping, but that's how you keep your horse safe. For instance, today, uh, Gunner did really, really well. We did him in the round pen and he rode nicely in the round pen. We took him out in the arena and he rode even better out in the arena. Um, he doesn't seem to need a lunge. He's a very mellow horse and so, um, I would bet by next week I will be comfortable having the girls up on Gunner. And again, I'm riding him in a halter and with a, well, actually, I'm not even using a, a bareback pad. And the reason for that is I want him to fill my instructions for my seat and I want to fill his tension. If he's feeling tense, if he's feeling calm, if he's happy with what's happening, if I'm happy with, with what's happening, um, at least here at the beginning, because I want us to be able to communicate with each other and for him to know that he's safe with me and for me to know that I'm safe with him. So I'm really happy with today, even though the girls didn't get to do any rodeoing. <laughs> but um, I'd much rather not have to tune my horses up and have them be safe and have the girls have a good seat and for the ponies to trust the girls and for the girls to deserve that trust. So it looks like we might have another kid horse on our hands here in a little bit and I'm super excited about that. Talk to you later.